Hi everyone, welcome back to SPSS for Beginners with me, Dr. J. Today we're going to look at how to conduct factor analysis using SPSS and this is what we call exploratory factor analysis. So before we jump into the steps of uh, analyzing um, exploratory factor analysis or EFA, um, I'll tell you a little bit about what EFA is is all about. So exploratory factor analysis um, is an, an analysis when um, you have a set of items. Okay, So when you do or when you uh, design your questionnaire, okay, uh, it's for the purpose of measuring uh, constructs or factors. And all of these factors and constructs must be represented by items. So you're going to have a set of items and using EFA or exploratory factor analysis, you will be an, uh, analyzing whether or not all of these items have underlying dimensions or factors. Uh, so we would like to see whether or not these items have uh, patterns of collinearity among them. Okay, so to simplify, okay, for example, we, uh, we take this uh, theoretical framework example, okay, whereby this research uh, um, is testing three independent variables, uh, performance expectancy, effort expectancy, and facilitating condition in terms of technology use uh, in relation to organizational performance. So all of these uh, factors have items uh, representing them, okay, to measure each of the factors. So this is the example of the items that uh, measures each of the factor. So what factor analysis will do is to analyze whether or not all of these factors do represent, uh, whether or not, sorry, whether or not all of these items do represent the factors, okay? And uh, in your book, Okay, we are going to uh, start from uh, page 48 with all of the steps, but you, um, the book starts uh, on this topic on page um, 30, uh, sorry, 36, okay? So, exploratory factor analysis. So, you can read up from page 35 to page 48. Uh, seven on all of the um, information on EFA. So there are various types of EFA uh, and we will be using extraction method uh, and also a rotation uh, method and so on. So for the purpose of this um, activity, practice activity, we will be using a specific uh, method of extraction, uh, which is principal axis factory, and for the rotation, we are going to use direct or blaming. So please read up uh, on um, EFA, please read up more on EFA, why uh, the following rotation and extraction are used. Okay, so we are going to go um, step by step now. So for the practice activity, it starts from page 37. Um, but all of the steps uh, are indicated also in page 48. So we are going to open technology use data and now we are going to test and I will be uh, explaining all of the steps also later on. So we are going to use uh, technology use data set. So please open that up. Okay, and we are going to go to page 48. Okay, so this is the practice activity. So now um, these are the method of extraction and method of rotation that we are going to use. And these are the steps that um, you are going to perform for EF8. So I'm going to show you one by one. So here in the data view, these are the data that has uh, been um, recorded. There are 135 respondents and for the variable view, these are the items or the questions. So let's go to analyze. Dimension reduction factor. OK, 
okay i'll just reset everything so we are going to choose tu1 okay that is the coding that's a set uh, so we are going to choose tu1 until tu14 and move it to the variables box in the descriptives uh, choose KMO and Bartlett test, okay, and then click continue. For extraction, we are going to use principal axis factoring and also just take the screen plot. And then for the rotation, we are going to use direct or min. For the scores, we just leave it as it is. And for options, we are going to take sorted by size and then click. OK, I continue and then click OK. So here, I'm going to explain a bit uh, on the KMO. What we want is to have a value of KMO of more than 0.6. OK, so I'm going to jump into the S, uh, PowerPoint file. So here, I've um, uh, put it uh, in a table form. OK, this is from the reference. Um, and 0.6 and above or a value that shows uh, that the items are factorable. Okay, so we have 0.8 something, so it is a good um, value. All right, and the next one, what we're going to look at is the Bartlett's test. So uh, it should be significant, okay, to um, show that this uh, the items are factorable. So that means our data is okay. So the next one we want to look at is total various variance explain. So here we can see there are four um, items that, uh, sorry, four factors have emerged, okay, from screen plot as well. So how we want to look at it is um, here the line is quite uh, like kind of straight, okay, but before before it becomes straight, there are one, two, three, four. So that indicates four items. Okay. So the factor ma factor matrix table also indicates four items. There are four columns here. But what we're gonna look at is the pattern matrix. The values in the pattern matrix will determine um, the factors, right? So usually, what I would like to do is I would like to copy this. Okay, and just paste it in a blank um, Word document so I can show you how the factors um, is determined, okay? How the items, um, which factor will the items be in, okay? If you get what I mean, right? So let's have a look at uh, this. So um, how do you want to look at it is if we are looking into column one, that means we are we are uh, determining what are the items that represents factor one, okay? Um, so how we want to determine it is the value, okay, um, or what we call factor loading, um, must be larger than the next column for it to be representing factor one, okay? And please, do not take the positive or negative value into account. Just look at the number here, okay? So, for example, 0.895 is larger than 0 0.062. So, this represents factor 1. And let's um, do that until we find that the number is smaller. So, this item, okay, 0 0.078 is smaller than this column. So we don't want this as factor one. So factor one will be only um, these items. So we just highlight it in yellow. Okay. So the next one. So factor one has been accounted for. We are going to use column two. That means this is factor two now. So starting here using the same method. So we're going to stop here because this is smaller than the next column. Again, do not look at the positive or negative sign. So we are going to put um, another different color. So that means these three items represent factor two. So now we are going to look at the next one. Okay, so we are going to stop here. This will be factor three. 
And now this is factor four. Okay, I'm gonna do it in red. Why? Okay, because um, you have to read up on this, but for factors to be um, considered um, a factor, okay, there must be at least three items. Okay, so here. Because factor 4 only has one item, so you cannot consider this as a factor, okay? So we are going to rerun this analysis without TU9 because automatically you have to remove this because it does not, this item does not belong anywhere. So let's jump a bit here to your PowerPoint slides. So let's have a look at the criteria, okay? So for the data to be factorable, the KMO must be more than 0.6. So this one is check. Bartlett test must be significant, check. How many factors? We've already checked the fact, factor matrix, three plot, total variable, explained, and factor matrix, check. What do you think these factors represent? Okay, we have to look at the factor loadings and for a value to be considered or the items to be considered at least the value should be more than 0.4 plus minus, okay? Uh, some um, reference say must be more than 0.3, so it's up to you to use which justification, okay? So again, let's have a look at our data just now, and the value is less than 0.4. So there's two um, justifications whereby we can remove TU9 from our analysis, one being it does not belong in any any factor, and two, the factor loading is less than 0.4. So we are going to do the next analysis, uh, step two, uh, in the next video. So see you later. Bye-bye.